is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. Newlyweds Bill and Icy Spencer are elated when they find the perfect apartment in a quaint Seattle neighborhood. But their hopes for the future are soon shattered when they are confronted by the supernatural. Intruders with a dark history hold them captive, making them the victims of their violent rage. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. The famous Space Needle towers above Seattle, Washington, a symbol of the hopes and dreams of those mariners and mill workers who founded this city more than 150 years ago. It was a place where people came to make a fresh start, escape from the past. But for some, the past is not easily buried. It clings like a lonely shadow and reappears when least expected. October 2004. I'm never gonna pass this midterm. What's with the negativity? You've got to have a positive attitude, my friend. I have a positive attitude. I'm positive I'm going to fail. <laughs> Marissa Spencer, known to her friends as Icy, is a graduate student working toward a master's degree in mental health. So, how is married life? You know, we've been so busy. Icy has been married for a couple of months now and eagerly welcomes this new phase in her life. It's been really great. Everything's exciting. Everything seemed to be in that stage that you're trying to get to know all these things about this person. We were having a lot of fun. It was an adventure. Speak of the devil. Hey, honey. Her husband, Bill, is also a student, studying for his bachelor's degree. At night, Bill works as a contractor for a local courier company. I hate to tear you away, but I found this apartment and it looks great. So I set up an appointment first to see it today. Wow, this does look promising. Yeah. Is it okay if I steal her away from it? Please, maybe when I see you next, you have a new apartment. Let's hope. I'll see you later. Bill is anxious to leave the university district, having grown tired of the rowdy college lifestyle. It's more of a party atmosphere. It's not really the best atmosphere for a, a young married couple. This almost looks too good to be true. Well, don't jinx it now. I know. I'm just so ready to start our new lives in some new place, away from all of this. I got a good feeling about this one. I know. I'm so sick of our apartment now. We wanted to go to a, an area that was more quiet, more of a traditional family setting. Icy is delighted to learn that the apartment is located in the historic Ballard neighborhood just outside of Seattle. What attracted me to that area is it's like a park-like setting. And there are these old buildings that have a lot of uh, coffee shops and little consignment stores. It's a family-oriented place. I felt pretty safe walking down the street at night there. When the Spencers arrive at the apartment complex, they notice a pile of debris right in front of the building. Hi, you must be the Spencers. Yeah, hi, I'm Bill. This is my wife. Ah, uh, it's Marissa, right? Yes, but everybody calls me Icy. Well, Bill, Icy, I really apologize for the mess out front. It's not normally like this. We're finishing up renovations on the apartment today. What, the apartment for rent? Uh, yeah, the previous tenant The building the manager told us that the former tenant left it in a bit of a, in a hurry, no, and it wasn't story. looking very nice, so they decided to rip everything apart and uh, just basically rebuild it inside. Uh, it says in the ad, all new fixtures. Oh, yeah. Whoever gets this gets a brand new one-bedroom apartment. Shall we go have a look? Yeah, sounds good. Renovations 
renovations will be complete today, and after that, the place will be ready for new tenants. To get a nice, you know, newly remodeled apartment in a great area of town for not a lot of money was truly a, a stroke of luck, it seemed at the time. The place has everything the young couple is looking for, yet Bill can't help but feel apprehensive. There was something about the apartment that didn't seem right to me. So how does it look in here? Everything seems to be okay. That's it? Don't you think this place is perfect? It's pretty good. Pretty good? It's gonna be like we're living in a brand new place. It's in our price range, too. What's wrong? You don't like it? No, no, it, it's not that. You know what, you're right. I, I just can't believe we found a place this nice this soon, that's all. But you're right, it's perfect. So you like it? I didn't say anything because I, well, it kind of seemed silly to turn down a perfect apartment for, you know, a feeling. Well, what are we waiting for? The following week, the Spencers move in. Icy works on transforming the apartment into a home. I wasn't alone. It just felt so eerie. Icy convinces herself that her mind is just playing tricks on her. I thought, we're just moving in, we have all this stress, I'm just tense, I haven't slept in days, so maybe I'm just not used to this place. Days pass, and Icy, preoccupied with her new role as a wife, puts the incident out of her mind. I was just so happy to be with him, to be there. I was hoping that we could have a family of our own, do normal family things, and uh, basically just to have a normal life. All set. You know, we gotta get a move on if we're gonna get there on time. Okay, but wait a sec. How do I look? You look great. But you should probably dress warm because it's getting cold outside. Well, it's just a little difficult to get dressed when you won't tell me where we're going. I told you, all right? We got the best table in town, but we're gonna lose it if we don't get a move on. Bill. Are you sure we can... I mean, this is really sweet and all, but right now we can't afford to spend money on some fancy restaurant. Don't worry about it, okay? Everything's been taken care of. Besides, I think with the way we've been working, we deserve a celebration. Come on. Our financial situation at that time wasn't really the best. All of a sudden, all these expenses would show up, and we were really struggling for a while. That weekend, Bill tells Icy that they deserve a much-needed break announces that he's taking her out for the night. Well, you are full of surprises, aren't you? I told you we could afford it. Get the blanket. You were right. If 
about what? You did get us the best table in town. <laughs> I felt very fulfilled at that time. It just signified a new beginning. We were very excited about it. The next morning, Bill rises early and lets Icy sleep in. For the first time in weeks, the couple has no classes, work, or unpacking to worry about. Just out of the corner of my eye, some figure was moving. this morning? No, he didn't hear you come in. You startled me, that's all. So, what's going on outside? It's nothing. So, what do you want for breakfast, huh? Mmm, coffee sounds good. Mm, you're too good to me. I really wasn't that concerned with it. There didn't seem to be anything to it other than just creepiness. After they move in, the Spencers finally feel settled in the apartment. Icy can now concentrate on her schoolwork. Honey, you're home early. I'll have dinner ready in a second. I just have to fire off this email to my professor. somebody in front of the door, in front of me. sure that I saw something. But an investigation of the apartment reveals nothing is amiss. I didn't really believe in ghosts. I thought people made up all these stories. I just didn't think it could be true. It's not rational. But I know in the back of my mind that there was something there. I just didn't want to admit it. How's your day? Huh? I said, how's your day? What's the matter? I need to tell you something. But I'm afraid you're gonna think I'm crazy. Oh, anything's possible. This isn't funny, Bill. All right, all right, try me. Something's going on in this apartment. I don't know 
exactly what it is, but I've got the strangest feeling that... Well, then what? That we're not alone. What are you talking about? I've been seeing things through the corner of my eye, like shadows or something going past the doorways. She was certainly afraid and certainly concerned about what she had seen and a little as panicky. As soon as I look up, they're gone. I don't know what you're seeing, but I'm sure everything's fine. I don't know. Well, I thought initially that it was an overreaction. Thought it might have been just a run of the mill, typical standard story where things go bump in the night. Have you considered the fact that you're at a computer all day? I mean... Well, I kind of today. downplayed everything, thinking that it's not that big a deal. It's just my imagination. No, no, what I'm saying is your eyes are tired and they're probably playing tricks on you. I'm sorry. It's silly, I know. No, it's not silly. It's just, you know, I'm here, so don't worry about it, okay? He was so reassuring. He wanted everything to be okay. So I felt like I was over-dramatizing. October turns to November, and Icy is still on edge. She doesn't like to be in the apartment alone. But Icy no longer feels that she can talk with her husband about it. I didn't feel like he was really listening to me. He was just, oh, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. She avoids going home after class, killing time at a local coffee shop until Bill gets off work. I tried to stay out as much as I could because I just could not bear the feelings I was having in that apartment. Eventually, Icy has no other choice but to return to the apartment. Open the door and I stepped foot in the apartment. It felt so tense. I felt like I was the one who was intruding. I just felt like somebody was really watching what I was doing and it was really scary. thing happened when we started laughing so hard that we all started to remember when you could you just give me a little room here what's the matter with you i've got to finish making dinner and i've got this huge exam that i still haven't studied for but i think it's just great that you're having so much fun at work her attitudes seemed to change she went from being you know fun and outgoing and cheerful to being more withdrawn kind of moody you know it was it was quite disturbing that's a little obnoxious and I think you're overreacting a bit. That's your answer for everything. I'm overreacting now just like I'm overreacting about whatever the hell is in our house. Crying out loud. Is that what this is about? Yes, that's what this is all about. I thought we were past all this. That's easy for you to say. You're never home. Well, I don't know what you want me to do. I want to know that you're taking this seriously. Why can't you just let this drop? You know what? I'm not hungry anymore. You want dinner? Make it yourself. It seemed like my wife was blaming me for not having answers or, or solutions for what was going on. It was very frustrating to not be able to come up with something. That night, Bill and Icy go to bed angry at each other and do not speak until the following evening. Hey, Mrs. 
Spencer. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I've just been just off lately. Not myself. You were right. No, no, look. You were right. I've, I've been kind of a jerk lately. No. No, I have, all right? You don't have to sugarcoat it for me. I can take it. Domestic squabble, well, yeah, I think so. And hey, we survived. I suppose we did. Hey, why don't you uh, take a break from your studying tonight, okay? And we can get some leftovers for dinner and pop in a movie and uh, just relax. What do you say? Well, okay. I saw somebody go down the hall into the bathroom, but whoever or what, whatever it was, just, it disappeared. I saw a tall, thin, dark figure. It was unnerving because I, I went into the bathroom and it wasn't there. What did he look like? I don't know, it was like a, a shadow of a person. Oh my God, that's the same thing that I've seen. What are we gonna do? What can we do, right? It was, uh, it was nothing. Oh, God, Phil. You know there's something in this apartment with us. God. I wasn't that sure that I really believed in ghosts at that time. It just didn't seem, it doesn't seem rational. I can't keep pretending that there's nothing wrong. You're making me feel like I'm crazy. And I know I'm not. Where are you going? Here. Well, wait, I'm gonna come with you. That night, the Spencers find refuge at a local coffee shop. There, Bill finally realizes that Icy's fears are valid and agrees that they must do something. We'll lose if we break the lease, right? There was certainly no denying that we had both seen figures in the apartment, and we quickly realized we both wanted out of that apartment. Do you think we could somehow get out of our lease? What are we gonna say? We don't like... We don't like living with ghosts? The risk of sounding crazy is, is a powerful suppressant, so that was certainly a big reason why we didn't ask anyone to help us get out. No matter how much Bill and Icy want to leave their apartment, they know they are tied to it. We had nowhere to go and we needed help. So we went online and searched, and we found the Washington State Ghost Society. They were in Seattle. The next day at the Washington Ghost Society, Shannon Stidman 
comes across the email from the Spencers. Stidman has been a paranormal investigator for over six years and has witnessed supernatural events. Even still, she broaches each message with caution. A lot of things can be mistaken for paranormal phenomena. So we like to take our time and make sure that they're credible and that we're really dealing with a ghost. In her response, Stidman outlines the basic steps that she gives to all potential clients. Our advice initially was for them to keep logs of the activity, to keep in touch with us so we could monitor the situation, to see if things would get worse, get better, stabilize. If there is indeed a presence in their home and the activity escalates, Stidman knows that it's only a matter of time before they will hear from the Spencers again. Oddly enough, over the next month, Bill and Icy no longer sense a presence lurking in the shadows. It is a welcome relief for the couple, who feel like newlyweds once again. I got three words for you. Mm. Are they, I love you? Oh, well, there's that, but no, I was thinking of three others. No more homework. <laughs> All right, time to call it a night. You're right. Oh, there's just one other thing. Despite the lack of activity, Icy takes Shannon Stidman's advice and keeps a ghost log. Do you really think this is going to work? I don't know. But you've got to admit, it hasn't hurt. For a time, things seemed to, you know, calm down. There seemed to be a, a period of peace, and we were both optimistic and hopeful that maybe the worst was over and you know, things would get back to normal. A week later, Bill and Icy enjoy another quiet evening at home. Promise me next time you're gonna try really hard not to cheat. Cheat? Are you calling me a cheater? <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> I think someone's just a sore loser. Can't take being beat by a girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> killing me. I saw him. I saw his face. A teenage boy. Really you mean a boy? looked like he had been hurt pretty bad. It looked like his face had been severely damaged by something. What do you mean, a boy? How? I don't know. Somehow I could see him, and you're, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I, I don't think that he's evil. And I was still holding on to the hope that this was not that big a deal and maybe that there were ways that we could diminish the impact of whatever this was. Well, it doesn't make it any less creepy. I don't want this thing in her home. I know, I know, but I just get the feeling he's trying to tell us something. The glimpse of the teenage boy only leaves 
the couple with more questions. What did happen to him? Was he maybe killed in that apartment? And what about the people who did that to him? Although the presence does not threaten the couple, Icy feels trapped. I had nowhere else to go. And it was pretty horrible to live that way. It just felt really desperate. I was living in a nightmare. Icy begins to feel helpless and desperate, believing there is no way out of this apartment. I'm a strong person, but I felt like I was losing control over everything in my life. I just felt like death was all around me. The whole apartment felt like it was a huge crypt. <laughs> By December, only two months after moving into the apartment, Icy becomes physically and emotionally exhausted. I totally felt like I was becoming somebody else. Like I was moving under a, under a spell. She is unable to keep up with the demands of school, sending her deeper into depression. I would be thinking these horrible things I felt like hurting myself. I was always sad. I felt like it was so unbearable. Hey, Icy. Hi. I'm sorry. How did you do on the final? Here we go. At that point, I wasn't really talking much to anybody. I was avoiding people. I didn't want them to think that I was nuts. That night. Where have you been? You know, you should have been home hours ago. You could have at least called, told me where you were. I've been worried sick. I just flunked my exam, okay? And that means I flunked the class. I see. Oh, I see. I'm what exactly? Get out of our house. 
Alex, leave us alone. Do you understand me? I said get out! Sudden, it was as if somebody had put out a lit cigarette on my chest. I see flee the apartment, terrified by the violent intruder. Both of us were only concerned with getting out of that place right then and there. It could strike any time. There was nothing that we could do to defend ourselves against whatever this was. They drive aimlessly for hours, trying to make sense of what just happened. We were definitely at the end of our ropes at that point. Unable to gather their wits, they check into a motel to regroup. They contact the Washington Ghost Society again. But this time, the Spencers hope to convince them that they are truly victims of the paranormal. That day, investigator Shannon Stidman meets with the frightened couple. Well, it certainly seems like a lot has gone on since that first email you sent. And it's apparent that the... What struck me most about Bell and Icy's story was that I events were escalating. It was becoming dangerous to live there. So that's when we got involved. I have a few theories about what I think might be going on based upon what you've told me so far. One of the first things that you mentioned was that the apartment had been renovated. That stuck out to me from the very beginning. Is that important? Stidman believes that any entities trapped in the apartment could have been unleashed during recent renovations. Anytime you tear apart a structure, it disturbs the psychic energy. And renovations in a haunted house either make the hauntings go away entirely or they make them worse. And in this case, it seems to have contributed to the activity. A common theme in hauntings is that something traumatic happened. The image seen by Bill was a sign there was something definitely going on in there, something very powerful, something very strong. But why attack Bill? We've been there for weeks, and nothing like this has ever happened. Stidman explains that some entities feed on emotions such as fear and anger. Negative energy gives them the ability to intensify the activity. Is that what this is about? Yes, that's what this is all about. I think we're past all this. You're never home. You just let this drop. If they start to become afraid of it, their energy will feed the entity. It will do something more dramatic. And it's just a matter of time before something harms them physically in some way. So what do we do now? We go back. <laughs> now. No, 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 I can't go back there. But we need you there in case the investigators have questions. Icy is scared, but she realizes that this may be the only way to take back some control. It's like I was at their mercy. I just didn't want these things to defeat me. Okay, we'll go back. But I'm not setting a foot in that apartment. Hours later, the ghost hunters arrive. They hope to document any strange activity so they can better understand what is occurring in the Spencer's apartment. The investigative team includes two paranormal specialists and medium, Lois Lee. I first started suspecting that I had psychic abilities when I was in my late teens. When I got a little bit older, I was able to describe ghosts that were in houses. 
Is that the psychic? Yes, but I prefer that you stay right here and have no contact with her until after she's finished her investigation of the house and grounds. We want her to be totally unbiased. The psychic goes in knowing nothing. We do not want her to be influenced by what we already know. We want to be sure that any vibes she gets, any impressions she gets, are from her, not from things that she's been told. Can I have the key? investigators by providing a shortcut to the past, sometimes even communicating with the spirits. My procedure is to go into a place and start putting my hands on the walls or objects in the room to try and be able to see into the past. The images come to me pretty naturally. If I'm focusing hard enough, they can become so real that it, it's almost like they are there. I didn't feel anything. I didn't have my usual sensations that there was a spirit there. such a pathetic figure, young, maybe about 18, 17 years old, and I felt so sorry for him. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. No, don't worry, I won't hurt you. Then, another feeling, menacing and dark, begins to overwhelm her. I started to feel myself changing. I was kind of getting the sensation of being in the body of somebody watching him. in my hand a gun. was just horrible. The next thing I know, I was running. I've never really seen that much physical human gore in a vision before. It's kind of like your first time in a morgue. Oh my God, Lois! Lois, are you okay? I'll be fine, I just need to catch my breath. Of all the investigations we've done, we've, she's seen a lot of things, she's heard a lot of things, she's felt things, but she's never been, I'd never seen her that badly shaken before. What happened in there? I, I, don't, I don't know. I've never experienced anything like this. Never. What did you see? I saw a young boy. That's exactly what I saw. She had the very same impression of that youth that I did. And it was kind of a validation that we were not crazy and that we weren't just, you know, overreacting. You two got out just in the nick of time. We don't know what's going to happen next. You can't go back in there. Stidman believes it unwise for the couple to return to their home. If Bill and Icy had decided to stay in the apartment, it would have just continued to escalate. How bad it would have gotten, I don't know. Lois has a psychic impression of what may have occurred in the apartment. My conclusion on what I saw was that it might have been drug related. It seemed like there might have been some gang activity involved. It felt like a retribution crime.
Over the next week, the investigative team puts together a report on the details of the haunting. They found no evidence of EVPs and have recorded no unusual visual information. They do turn to history to see if they can get any insight into the haunting. Further research reveals that the neighborhood was once the site of violent gang and drug activity. Although there are no clear-cut answers to what occurred in the apartment, the Spencers are satisfied with the outcome of the investigation. I don't know if I could go on in life asking myself time and again what was haunting that apartment and why. A lot of pieces fit in together, and that was basically enough for us. Soon after moving out, the Spencers find a new home. I would have to say that was one of the happiest days of my life. The apartment we got was still in Seattle, but not as good as where Ballard is. But somehow, I felt like it was a refuge for me. At least I could have peace of mind there. Say cheese. Cheese. In May 2007, Bill Spencer graduates from college. Thanks. No problem. See you at the graduation party? You bet. Here we go. Let's go. See ya. Bye, guys. Congratulations. Despite the trauma they've endured, the Spencers have come to terms with their experience with the supernatural. But it has also forever changed how they view the world. I used to not believe in anything supernatural. I always thought that if I can't see it, if I can't touch it, it doesn't exist. There are some things in this world that cannot be seen. Don't kill me! In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows, and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Jim and Joanne Whitley transform an old farm into a working horse stable, they believe they've achieved their dreams. But the Whitleys don't realize their hard work has stirred a dormant presence, dead set on evicting the living. As their family crumbles, Joanne resolves to take back her life and fight for what is hers. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. For centuries, the state of New Hampshire was a battleground. Here, Native American tribes fought over the fur trade, while French and English armies slaughtered each other for control of the New World. Today, the gray granite stones jutting above the land name only a fraction of the souls lying beneath. raised, farm girl tough. I'm an honest, hard-working person. If there's a problem, she fixes it herself. I started working on farms when I was nine, and basically I knew as a, as a child that's what I wanted to do with my life. Her husband, Jim, is cut from the same self-reliant mold. It's a way of life they've instilled in their son, David. We're gonna need you on this one, buddy. The Whitleys moved to Kingston, New Hampshire, with dreams of opening a horse stable and breathing crisp country air every day. But an ominous force challenged those simple goals. And now, Joanne is fighting not just to preserve her dreams, but to preserve their lives. BP 90 over 
160, pulse 110. Beat the trauma as fast as you can. We're prepping now. Joanne fears David is permanently damaged his spine in a bike accident. I felt totally helpless. He was in trouble. I just couldn't do anything for him. I just want to go see him. Just give the nurse a second. For the Whitleys, this is the scariest moment of their 20-year marriage. I was like, oh, it's the end of my world. Had to be the worst day of my life. Here's what's going on. This line right here, he has a fractured vertebrae. He's gonna be okay. Probably. It's lucky it didn't cut into his spinal cord. Doctor? Excuse me. Joanne has no doubt that David's injury is the latest attack in her family's long battle with the supernatural. It's hurt our son. I didn't know what could happen next. Somebody could die from this. But Jim isn't so sure. It could just an accident. I was really scared, but I didn't know if that was just a bad string of luck or there was something else going on. Nobody's life is like this. I've got to do something. I'll find a way. With my son breaking his back, I had had enough. I need to do something. And I need to do something fast. For years, Joanne has sought logical explanations for the negative presence besetting her horse farm. But the uncanny activity has defied all logic. Now, Desperate, she puts her faith in a psychic. There have been so many things happening for so long now. And now with this attack on my son, it's hard to explain. I just didn't know what to say or how to feel. Can you help me? I don't have any power over what you're facing. But who else can I go to? We've tried everything. This is my last attempt to get some help. I'm sorry. There may not be anything to do but move. Nothing is going to take my home from me. This woman works with energy. She may be able to help you. Thank you. That night, from her stable office. Hello, my name is Joanne Whitley. I understand you might be able to help me cleanse my property. Sue Bernier practices Shambhala, a discipline that balances residual energy transcending time. Everything is comprised of energy. Our thoughts have energy. Our words carry energy. Sue's heard many stories right. just like Joanne's. What sort of things? People call it poltergeist, demons, spirits. But they all have the same effect. Negative energy will start to take you over. The stronger the force, the bigger the incident. You've suffered a lot. And those are just some of the things that have been happening. I started seeing her property. I started feeling nauseated that shortness of breath, which typically signals there is a negative energy. Do you think you can help? Well, I can try. What exactly does that involve? I heard the despair well, in Joanne's up. voice. And I knew I was in for more than your typical clearing. And the symbols of Shambhala to help them ascend. How soon could you come over? I can be there tomorrow. I Thank you didn't so want to get my hopes up, and I was a little skeptical. I didn't know she could help us. Nobody's been able to help us before. The next afternoon, as Sue approaches Joanne's home, she senses the property's former inhabitants. Using Shambhala, I can see a picture book of errors. I saw a Native American. A 
that's our kids playing. It was as if I was going back through time. I hear the people. I feel the people, what moods they were in, how they died. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh. Hi, I'm Joanne. Thanks for coming Hi. out. Nice to meet you. Wow, you have a really interesting property. Well, we've done a lot of work. It was in terrible shape when we first saw it. Joanne tells Sue the story of her family's history on the farm. When they first found the property, it had sat abandoned for years. This is it, Jim. This is perfect. You know, I wouldn't say perfect. The 300 acres of open land are just what Joanne needs to fulfill her lifelong dream opening her own horse farm. Horses and her, I, they're, they're like one. Her love was that great for them. Jim is an electrician by trade. Certainly enough land for your business. But he's skilled in all areas of home repair. Mom, I can help fix it up. David shares his parents' excitement. You got plenty of land, especially being a young boy, you get to go out and explore. Come on, let's go check it out. It was a mess, but we knew we could turn it around and make it a beautiful home. Over the next year, Joanne invests all her resources into renovating the property and preparing her business. Once we made the house livable, we concentrated on... More visions of spirits filled with despair flood Sue's head. Shambhala is her state of mind. You cannot simply switch it off. You are sensitive to what is taking place around you. Are you all right? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, you were saying? I had teaching horses, and we also boarded private riding horses. Finally, Joanne is ready to recruit boarders and students. I expected to be happy and have healthy horses and have happy students and just live my dream. This is very nice. Thanks, Helen. <clears throat> uh, some little wiring problem, we'll get it fixed. The lights just wouldn't stop going on and off, but it was a very <sighs> creepy, strange feeling and these students started becoming very uncomfortable. Later that night. Did you sign up the new students? Well, I was taking them back to my office to sign, and the lights started flickering on and off. I was in disbelief. Well, I wired that myself. You know, I'm a licensed electrician. And when I do something, I make sure everything's tight and meets the code. It's no biggie. They'll sign anyway. But even when the lights are on, it's pretty dim in there. Uh, you'll want to add some more lights. I'll check the wiring before I go to work tomorrow. The new lights are going to have to wait. Fine. The next morning, the inspection leaves Jim baffled. And I checked through it, looked at the wiring, the circuit breakers. I couldn't find any problem at all. It sounded like there were some children out there playing. I, I didn't see anybody.
It was a little frightening. When you hear things like that, it just makes you wonder. I don't know where it came from, but I just brushed it off and kept doing what I was doing. Fix it? <laughs> there's nothing to fix. There's got to be something wrong. No, there's nothing. Huh. Must have been a fluke. Now I've got to get to work. Joanne's business flourishes within months. We were full really fast. Some of the horses were my own, but the majority were student horses. My whole dream was to have students that would want to compete. I was a very competitive instructor, and I wanted to be able to go to the shows with the students that were boarding here. Experience. Some of Joanne's students help out around the stable before and after lessons. Yeah, um, Frisco won't eat or drink anything. Have you taken him out yet this morning? Yeah, that's what's odd. Frisco is Joanne's favorite there, horse. He just needs to see Mama. But she's not worried is because she knows his yeah, quirks. Each horse has their own personality. The things that they do sometimes just kind of boggles your mind. like the earth was rumbling, like horses were galloping. Uh, what horses got out? They're all here. I heard galloping. We haven't heard anything. We... I felt very uncomfortable. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't explain it. Hey, everything all right? Uh, did you just hear anything? No, why? What'd you hear? I'm not sure. It sounded like a herd of horses just stampeded past the office. Odd. Yeah. Has he been out there a while? As long as I've been out here. You all right? Yeah, just thought I heard something. I'm sure it's nothing. I just know I heard and saw what I did. We heard this like old time type of music. Very clear. It was very, very creepy. It wasn't the wind. There's like 300 acres back there. There's no houses, no people, nothing. Mom, I'm not making it up. I know you're not, honey. Come on, help me walk Frisco. As the weeks pass, Frisco's eating doesn't return to normal. The horses to me are just like having children. They need just as much care and just as much love and several other horses begin acting sick. Joanne calls a vet for help. It's weird. Only my horses are sick. None of the student horses are. What's he been doing? Not eating. Seems to be uncomfortable. Um, seems to have a bellyache. It appears to be colic. It could be from changing his schedule, his water, his feed. That doesn't make any sense. They're all on the same schedule. I feed them all hay and oats, and it's top quality feed. I couldn't understand why they were getting sick. If that's the case, I may have to run some additional tests. That was really upsetting me, as well as my students. Tests? 
Look, I have my horse here and I'm worried. Could she catch this? If it's colic, and I think that it is, you have nothing to worry about. But I don't feel comfortable with it's this. It's not situation. contagious. <sighs> She means well, but she can be a little nervous. That's understandable. Yeah. I'm going to give your horses some mineral oil until I get these tests back. Just keep them on their feet. Keep fresh water in front of them. I've That's worked on do. farms with 60 head of horses and never had this many illnesses. Something was happening. It was a very negative feeling. Strange things like that continued to happen. And I had this growing feeling that our lives were being invaded. Sue is not surprised that Joanne's favorite horse had been feeling uneasy. Almost like a... Most animals are more susceptible to spirits. The spirits or energy just keeps crossing them. They don't know what's going on. First of all, it got worse. All my horses got worse. To hear the horses from the house, Joanne and Jim install an intercom. There. That's done. Perfect. You know, you hurt David's feelings the other day. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> it was obviously the win. Maybe it was, but next time, cut him a break. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. Hey, by the way, I ordered the lights you wanted the friend here. Thanks. As the weeks pass, Joanne develops close friendships with her students. I want you guys to think about riding in some competitions. Maybe. Hanging out with them helps take her mind off the negative feeling she senses on the property. Ladies, please excuse me. I'm going to get going. Oh, see you later. Bye. Kiss, kiss the baby. Guys, I really think I could win a competition. <clears throat> it's a little hard your first time, Deidre. That's not my Sierra, is it? No, that's definitely Frisco. We're still waiting for the test to come back. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Mm. It was a man's whistling. Your husband's a hell of a whistler. That's not Jim. He's out of town on a job. Well, then who is it? I don't know. Let's find out. And the students were scared to death. I didn't know if when I'd open the doors, if there'd be something or someone standing there. I had no idea what to expect. felt like there was a presence watching me that made me feel extremely uncomfortable. This is freaking weird. I don't know. What is going on here? I don't know, Deidre. Whatever, this whole place is freaking weird. Come on, let's just call it a night. How could I fight the sinister feeling or thing if 
it wouldn't show itself to me. How could I get rid of it? Hey, Jesse, how's it going? Yes, I know what Deidre said, but that's just Deidre. No, a Allison's just not sure if she's going to stay. I understand. What am I going to do next? If everybody leaves, I'm no longer going to be in business. definitely something hugging my leg. Hey, honey, I got the lights. Not now, Jim. <laughs> Not now? <laughs> Come on, you've been riding me about this forever. Something's here. Something just grabbed my leg. <sighs> To really make me say, yes, I'm a true believer, it would probably have to come up and bite me right in the backside. Joanne, I... I know there's something. I don't know exactly what it is. With or without Jim's support, Joanne cannot sit idly by as her horses continue to fail. One night, while Jim works overtime, she meets with an acupuncturist. Joanne hopes the alternative therapy will soothe her horses while she waits on the vet's lab tests. Thank you so much for coming out. I just hope I can help. Joanne doesn't realize the acupuncturist has psychic abilities. What's wrong? This isn't just about the horses, is it? She turned to me and said, do you mind if I say something to you? There are spirits. She said, do you realize you have many, many spirits here? Finally, somebody is seeing and feeling what I have been feeling. Why are they here? Sometimes earthbound spirits are trapped. Maybe they died a horrific death. Maybe some force is holding them here. The healer Either suspects way, the answer lies buried in the no. land's past. There are some rituals that may make peace, at least for a little while. It was like a big cloud of negativity over my farm, and I needed to find out why and try to put a stop to it. Can I have a look? Jim is still away on his job. Everything's fine. I've just been reading up on the history of Kingston. You know, a plague came through in the 1800s. Wiped out half the town. Oh, scary. Look, I'm probably going to be stuck here most of the night. Yeah, do what you got to do. We'll be here. Yeah, I knew you'd understand. How's David? He's fine. See you in the morning. Bye. Every night, Joanne goes to the stable for one last check on her horses.
I hear and feel someone walk by right next to me. going after my son. He's my whole heart. He's my whole reason for being. I had to put an end to it. Joanne has felt isolated from her husband since first sensing a negative presence. He was a skeptic, but I didn't know who else to turn to or who else to tell. You know I've heard things. David heard footsteps last night. Footsteps? <laughs> come on, it's an old house with creaky floorboards. I mean, if there's something here, how come nothing's happening to me? Maybe you were just ignoring it. Well, maybe you're just imagining it. She was very angry. If I don't believe something, I don't believe. And what do you want to do, move? Give up your business? I'm not giving up anything. This Saturday, I'm going to try to cleanse the property. Cleanse the property? The lady who came to help me with the horses, she told me what to do. Well, there's a source. Just take David away that afternoon. No, I was gonna go and- I don't care what you were going to do. Take him to town. Hello? Frisco Tesserin? What does that mean? I, I, I don't know if I can do that. Thanks. Thank you. Nothing can be done to ease the horse's suffering. For Joanne, losing Frisco is like losing one of her family. And I loved her beyond belief. But she will not be scared away by the negative presence. This was my property. It was either them or me, and I wasn't about to give up. That Saturday, Joanne burns sage to cleanse the property. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. This whirlwind of voices and, and air and everything light, started love, happening. And banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. I cleanse this building with light and love and banish all negative energy. Everything stopped. And it was beautiful. I just kind of sat back and said, wow, I did it. I beat it. 
For a good while, things returned to normal. Jim and I were getting along better. I really wanted to build my business up, and we'd been saving. So we decided to invest our savings in an indoor riding arena. What happened? We hired a contractor, and he cleared that field. Sue realizes that Joanne has unwittingly provoked the spirits all along. Having a home and property that is in constant change will cause the spirits to uprise and start to attack. One night, not long after breaking ground for the arena. Mm -hmm. Hello? What about all our money? Thank you. He's bankrupt, Jim. Our contractor is bankrupt. What? Apparently, he owes everybody money, and he skipped town. Nobody's heard from the guy in two weeks. We had put our life savings, as well as our son's college fund, into this project, and to lose that money was absolutely devastating. I know a lawyer. Maybe there's a way to get some money. Back. He's gone, Jim. We've got to try. You of all people know that. I felt like I was in a boat going down to the bottom of the ocean. What is it? What is it? I heard the man's voice. Joanne thought she had banished the negative presence. No, I don't want to live here anymore. But it was lying in wait. It's gonna be, I'll make it all right. I'll make it all right. It's Joanne's property is besieged by a negative presence. Good riding today. Everybody. But she resolves not to be intimidated and even recruits new students. There's a regional event coming up in three weeks. That sounds great. What about the indoor riding arena? I know we've had some delays, but we've got everything under control. Oh my God. Look. I had never seen anything levitate like that before. Oh, I'm out of here. Me too. Now it's starting to throw things and, you know, what, what could happen next? Could it be a knife? Are you okay? Thanks, I'll be fine. Okay. I became so overcome with anger at that point. I was ready to fight it and fight it any way that I possibly could. Later that night, when Jim comes home... I'm calling a priest to bless this home. Joanne pleads with her husband for support. Like Say that you believe me. If I accept that there is something supernatural happening on the property, then I will have to do something about it. I want to. And I don't know what to do. You know I'm here for you, honey. I, I, I believe in you. It's just... Daddy. David's in bed, right? That was a little girl's voice. <sighs> Call the priest. Oh, no. We both heard Mommy and Daddy, but there was no denying it. A few days later, the Whitley's parish priest blesses their home. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. Peace be with this house and with all who live here. May the God whom we glorify with one heart and voice enable us through the Spirit 
to live in harmony as followers of Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. For a while, the blessing helps. But Joanne still senses the lingering presence. Don't you have lessons this afternoon? Not anymore. What's gotten into you? It's gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. All I can think of is, oh my God, he can be paralyzed. Everything's gonna be all right. I felt totally helpless. We can't deal with this anymore. And I'm scared for my son's life. So. Sue isn't what surprised that neither the, the priest nor Joanne so could cleanse right the thing. property. The reason why blessings and smudgings don't work on a property. So they don't hold enough strength, enough vibrational strength to actually remove what is there. It can subdue, but it usually comes back. Do you think you can get rid of them? Well, I don't exactly get rid of them. In Shambhala, we try to heal the negative energies and help all the spirits to ascend. Is that dangerous? It can be. I'd like you to meet my husband, Jim, and son, David. When I first met Sue, my sister, I've met you before. Not that I know of, I haven't, but I felt very comfortable with her. It, it was very strange for that connection to come right away. I'm going to take David into town. Sue thinks it's best if no one is home during the cleansing. She said that it's like opening a door to the other side, these spirits they could attach themselves to people around her. I was concerned. There was evil on the property. And it was the largest spiritual gateway that I've come across. Aren't you going with him? I feel like I need to stay. Well, I need to walk the property. Sue believes the presence has retreated to the woods surrounding the farm. I'll be in the stable. Good luck. Okay. Joanne is used to doing everything herself. But now, she can only wait. We were all hoping that this would work. We were just hoping and praying that she could help us. I feel my hair starting to rise in the back of my neck. What was coming at me was evil. When I walk a piece of property, things come to me in different ways. Mostly I sense. I can sense who's standing beside me. I can sense who is walking towards me. I see the dimensions that are trapped there. And working with energy, you can be harmed. I have been stabbed, I've been scratched, choked, pinned down.
cleanse the property, she must convince the spirits to move on. You are no longer alive. You do not belong here. And the anticipation was incredible, waiting to see what the outcome was going to be. I want to help you ascend to a better place. Sue senses the spirits want to ascend. Something is holding them back. You are free to move on. Every spirit has to be released. It must. stomach starts turning. My heartbeat starts racing. I knew what was coming at me was evil. It is Samuel who has held the other spirits captive for centuries. The only thing going through my mind was, am I strong enough for this job? It wasn't a question of who was going to win. It was I had to come out alive. Samuel is pulling my neck ready to rip it off. When I pushed him down, I released all of his negative energy and I could breathe again. free now. You can go. It almost made me want to cry. Just the release of their energy and the relief that they felt. The ability to ascend and the freedom. Amazing. Amazing. I could hear the birds chirping. The sun was out. It was like a big blanket had been lifted off of me and off of my property. She is forever grateful to Sue. Sue is the one true help that we've had here throughout the years. The presence is finally gone but it has changed Jim and Joanne forever. I'm not sure where I've gotten the inner strength from. It's probably from God, but I know that I have the strength to fight anything when it comes to the health and well-being of my family. It's made me believe that there is something else out there. What? <laughs> it's hard to really explain but there is something else. In the dark.
darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. Jamie and Ben Shea find the perfect place to raise their children. But eerie sounds and ghostly voices puncture the quiet country night. An unseen menace lies in wait, intent on destroying their family and shattering their lives. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. The Ozark River Valley once stood as the gateway to the west, the last outpost of civilization before the frontier beyond. But nestled amid this lush countryside lies a different kind of portal, a crossroads between life and death, where the mortal and the eternal collide. In October 2003, Jamie and Ben Shea's search for a larger home leads them to Markham, Arkansas, an hour outside Little Rock. It's got some character to it, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Well, it's so historic. It was just absolutely beautiful. It had big old, old trees all around it. And it was just the picture of the house I've been looking for all my life. Built in the late 1700s, the home is one of the oldest in the state. I'm kind of a history buff, so that definitely piqued my interest. Ben can already picture raising his three children there. I knew that my kids could run out there and you know, just have a good time. I grew up that way, me running out and playing in the woods, and I definitely wanted that for my kids. Did the agent give you a key? The house is a short commute to Arbutus, where Jamie is a legal assistant. Ben is earning his degree while working nights as a nurse at a local factory. It was in between the two towns where my husband worked and where my husband went to school. So he could spend more time with the kids and not have to be traveling back and forth as much. Not so bad. I thought the walls would be peeling or something. I know. It looks like everything's in pretty good shape. There was a lot of room. I could totally see how the kids would have plenty of room to play. I knew as soon as I saw it that we had to have that house. We need to make an offer on the place before anybody else sees it. Okay, maybe we should look at the rest of the house first. Okay. Wow, this is great. Ceilings don't have any water spots. The roof must be in great shape. It's almost too good to be true. Huh. I'll say. <gasps> oh my god, what is this? Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. The fireplace had all kinds of markings on it, like the name of this boy that had died, pentagrams. It takes a lot to kind of spook me, so I was just like, oh, some teenager, you know, lived here before. And I the Shays remain that. enthusiastic about the house. Looks like a nice fireplace. Shouldn't be boarded up anyway. You think it still works? We decided right away the first thing that we would do was get rid of that. But other than that, it was just perfect. Within a few weeks, the family is all settled in. Wow, it's beautiful. D did you pick up those colors, Bridger? Yes. The couple's three children, eight-month-old Jackson, five-year-old Bridger, and 11-year-old Tori, 
are delighted by their new surroundings. Oh, oh that's Taylor calling for me. Again? Did you get this many phone calls when you were her age? I am just glad that she's adjusting to her new school well. Give me one more. The Shays quickly fall into a busy routine. You guys need to hurry up, because it's time to get to the bus, OK? Jamie hires an experienced sitter to watch the baby during the day. Hi. Hey. Uh, ben, this is Molly. Molly's going to be here with Jackson until I get home, OK? Sounds terrific. Ben works all night, so he'll be asleep. Till about 2, and then I'm off to class. Bye. Mm. Get some sleep, OK? Okay, um, call me if you need anything. Everything's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. Bye, Jackson. Can you please get the baby? for a fact I wasn't dreaming there was a baby crying out on the monitor and there was nobody home. It was a very creepy moment. Unsure what to make of it, Ben keeps the strange incident to himself. A few nights later, Ben trudges off to work, reminding himself that graduation is only a few months away. Talking, Tori? No, it's not Tori. It was just a bad dream, Bridget. Now go to sleep. My first thought was, did I leave the television on in the living room? I did a little quick listen, and it was completely silent. Later that night, around 3 a.m. Okay, if you're not gonna come out, then 
at least quit messing with your toys and go back to bed. tell you to keep it down. You hid from me. No, I didn't. I slept with Mommy last night. But before that, you were playing with your toys. I don't know what you're talking about. Why'd you go sleep with Mom? Come on, Bridger, tell me. No, you'll laugh at me. I won't. I promise. Please. I heard people talking. I couldn't see them, but I could hear their voices in my room. Did you hear them? To avoid scaring her brother, Tori does not tell him that she has also heard strange sounds. No, I, I it was probably just a bad dream. You just adjusting to your new bedroom. That's all. None of the Shays mention their individual experiences. For the next few weeks, time passes uneventfully. Despite the demands of his hectic schedule, Ben spends time with Bridger before leaving for work. And the old gray octopus swam back into his dark watery cave at the bottom of the sea and never, ever came back out again. The end. Read it again. Oh, it's getting late, kiddo. Give me a kiss. I love you. I love you too. I'm getting bed. Close ben hopes eyes. that after he earns his degree, he can work normal hours and spend more time with his family. Are you saying goodnight to Daddy before he leaves? I gotta go to work, buddy. I wish you didn't have to go. Me too. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Good night. kids in bed for the night, Jamie takes advantage of the quiet. Tori, is that you? Bridger, Tori, get back to bed. I kept hearing my kids running up and down the stairs. Get back in bed! The door was wide open. It didn't slam. I thought it was pretty creepy. All three of the kids were sleeping, and I was the only one in the house besides the kids.
that weekend. The eerie occurrences nag at Jamie until she can ignore them no longer. Molly told me the weirdest story today. She said that she heard crying in the baby monitor, and when she went upstairs to check on Jackson, he was asleep. She said it looked like he hadn't even been crying. The other day I heard crying on that thing, Jackson wasn't even home. Somebody's up. Well, it sounds like it's from down here. It's gotta be Bridger. I'll take care of this. It sounded like a, like a, a ball bouncing. I went to check on the kids and yell at them for being up so late and messing around. And, and you know, of course, everybody's sleeping. Well? They're all asleep. You know, these, these old houses, they make all kinds of noises that you can't explain. It's getting late. Uh, I'm going to bed. You coming? I'll be there in a second. All the strange occurrences suddenly make sense. At that moment, I did start to get the feeling that we were living in a haunted house. Jamie visits the local library, hoping to learn more about ghosts and hauntings. I'll finish this up for you. Okay. Brenda will finish helping you. I can't help noticing what kind of books you're checking out here. Are you interested in learning about ghosts? Yes. I grew up in a house that was haunted. Was it around here? 721 Franklin. Jamie is astonished. It's the house where her family now lives. She started telling me about a boy that had fallen out of the window and died. And he had fallen out of the room that was Bridger's room, where he had been hearing the voices and the, the people talking. I felt the color just rush out of my face. Everything makes sense now. All the little things that had happened that I thought, you know, someone's trying to play with us. Did you ever feel afraid? I mean, did this ghost ever hurt anyone? I just think he was looking for attention, you know? Poor little guy. You let me know if these help you. The next morning, Jamie eagerly awaits Ben's return home from work so she can tell him what she learned. She worries about how living in a haunted house may affect her children. No, you have to wait till it's cooked. It only takes eight minutes. Hey, guys, what you doing? Daddy! Daddy! Daddy? Hello? I'm making cookies. Ooh, I see you're putting your Saturday morning to good use, huh? Bridger, your hands are sticky. Why don't you go wash them up? Can you help out? Richard, don't touch me, <laughs> Ben, I talked to somebody who's lived in this house before. How'd you manage that? Well, she works at the library. I met her there. She says that there was a ghost in this house. A little boy. A little boy? I don't know what I feel about living in a haunted house. It was a scary feeling to know that we weren't the only ones there. Well, did she say that the ghost ever hurt anyone? Yeah, she said it never touched anyone. Ben assures Jamie 
that the little boy's ghost will not harm their family. Then we'll be fine. I didn't feel like it would really threaten her. You know, I just kind of thought maybe this haunting stuff will kind of die down. As the holiday season arrives, the activity quiets down around the house. someone was standing right behind me. Some rest, though. I'll put in the paperwork. Let me uh, grab that. First aid. Oh, oh, oh. Thank God you answered. Jamie, what's wrong? I felt like I was being watched, and then suddenly I looked up and I saw him on my computer screen. You, you saw who? And I didn't get a good look at who it was. Right. But... What happened? It was evil. I'll try to come home early, I promise. It was very frustrating. And, and not being able to be there, I felt totally trapped. That was probably the first time that I felt threatened. I didn't feel like it was a little boy playing games with us. I knew that this was something different. Jamie wonders if the woman who saw the boy's ghost ever encountered the other spirit. Is, is Brenda working? I'm sorry, Brenda no longer works here. Do you know how I can get in touch with her? I'm afraid not. She left with no forwarding address or telephone number. Did she leave the area? I think so, but I can't give you any more information Look, than that. Look, I am just a friend trying to get in touch with her. Is there something I can help you with? No. Thank you. I was really disappointed because I thought this is gonna be at least an answer to what we're dealing with here. Although days pass without incident, the dark presence continues to weigh on Jamie's mind. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, my briefcase. Hey, uh, don't forget to pick up Tori after school. She's over at Megan's. I forgot. Okay. Yeah, I really had a real just eerie kind of sick feeling in my stomach. dreaded going home. It was starting to not feel like a home anymore. Are you enjoying working on that group project you and Megan are working on? Yeah, I, I'm finishing it now. It'd be great if you didn't hit all the bumps. Sorry, honey, there's road construction. I thought we'd have some pause tonight. How does that sound? When I got out, Tori was under the minivan, pinned face down with a, the weight of, a, of the entire minivan on her, and I thought, she's not going to make it through this. <laughs> She... I think her back would be broken. Oh my God. They didn't know exactly to what extent she had a broken back. And so we were obviously concerned about whether she could ever walk again. It terrified me to not know. I believe Tori may have compression fractures to several of the vertebrae. I thought back about the events of the day 
and feel like I was being watched and that whole feeling that I had before we had the wreck, I started to wonder if there was some kind of connection. Right now, I just have to wait. <laughs> Thank you. Two weeks after the accident, the hospital releases Tori just in time for Christmas. Although her doctor expects her to make a full recovery, Tori will be bedridden for several months. What are you doing here? Get I like this. She could not walk without help, so I took a leave of absence from work because she needed pretty much constant care. You sure? Are you okay? Bridger, that's Tori's scooter. It's okay. He can ride it. It was an awful Christmas because we had just bought her a scooter. Don't worry, you'll be up and around riding on that thing before you know it. The scooter is kind of like a... Like, hey, you know, you will, you will walk again. You will be able to ride the scooter eventually. You're not paralyzed. Thank the good Lord for that. Come on, Tori. You heard what the doctor said. You are young and strong. You are going to be up and about in no time. Weeks pass. Jamie is so focused on Tori that she barely notices any paranormal activity. I really didn't think of anything else other than I wanted my daughter to be okay. Bridger, what are you doing up? People in my room are talking again. What are they saying? I can't understand them. The good boys and the bad boys all talk over each other. What bad boys? Who are the bad boys? I don't know. Can I sit with you, Dad? Okay, you can stay with us tonight. He's sleeping with us tonight. He's hearing voices again. I'm gonna go check on Jackson. Hey, buddy. Oh, you okay? Did you hear something scary? Jamie's relieved to find Jackson sleeping peacefully, unaffected by the voices that plague Bridger. I don't feel safe anymore. I don't think I can handle it. I feel like we are being watched all the time. But there's no way we can go anywhere until Tori is better. I didn't care whether the house was haunted or not at that point. We were just going to take care of our daughter, get her walking again. Well, we can start looking now, and I'll put the house on the market, and we'll see what kind of offers we get. In all our free time. Yeah, really. I loved this house. Yeah. Me too. Oh, 
out, Ben. What? Quit flicking my hair. What are you talking about? I didn't touch your hair. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't touch you. I just felt this urgent need to get everybody into the same room, and that way I could protect them in some way. Little man, we are just gonna sleep right here. Somebody please just tell me what's going on. Just a little excitement, that's all. We've gotta find somebody who can help us. We cannot live like this. There was an evil presence in the house that was out to harm us. And it wasn't the boy, it was something else. And it was starting to show itself more. And I knew we had to do something. The Shays contact the Central Arkansas Society for Paranormal Research. They arrange to come to the house as soon as Tori is well enough to be moved. This is ridiculous. I don't understand why I have to go. I need you to go with the boys and help Molly out. It's only for one night she's gonna bring you back in the morning, okay? Thanks, Molly. We really appreciate you doing it such last okay. minute. Just take the kids out to get some pizza tonight, okay? okay? I'll call. The team of investigators arrives and sets up for the night. We need to change these tapes. I don't want to. Alan Lowe's goal is to find physical proof to explain the paranormal occurrences. His wife, Angela, and their daughter, Violet, are psychics. The women in my family have always been very psychic, sensitive, open to the spirit world. Violet's gift goes beyond sensing. I'm probably classified better as a medium. I can talk to them, and they can talk to me, and there can be sort of a two-way conversation. The house makes an immediate impression on them. And when we walked in the house, it had sort of a depressing vibe. You know, it just felt heavy. I've done some research on the house, and it verifies what you've heard. Karen Schillings tries to connect the supernatural events to the house's history. Built in 1780, it once served as a hotel and stagecoach stop, and later, as a county jail. Why would that cause the house to be haunted? Oh. Alan explains that the house's rich past could account for the presence of spirits. Because it served as a way station of sorts. We'll walk through the house and see if we can sense any hot spots of spirit activity. When I got to the top of the stairs, it was a sinking feeling. And it was definitely coming from that direction of the house towards that room. Alan sets up a video camera where the psychics feel negative energy.
you all right? It's so... Violet senses a presence. She thinks it wants to make contact, but is too frightened to approach her. I felt like somebody walked in the room. Don't be afraid. I mean, he was human, but he didn't look like he was really standing there. He was sort of see-through. Will you talk to us? There's something else. Someone else is here. We felt like he'd been scared away by a very strong negative presence in the house. It was like a whole sea of people. They weren't happy, they seemed pretty miserable. It felt like they didn't want you there. Like you shouldn't be in this room. It didn't look human. This presence was something different and it was really terrifying. And I haven't been afraid of a house or a ghost since I was a young child, but this one scared me. Psychics tell Jamie and Ben about the little boy and the multitude of human spirits they encountered. Those are the voices your son has been hearing. And inform them there is a negative presence in the house. We don't know what it is, but with your permission... Angela hopes to communicate with it in order to learn more. One of the paranormal team people suggested that we find out more details about the spirits by asking them questions through the Ouija board. And I really didn't believe in the whole Ouija board thing. Skeptical because a Ouija board can be easily manipulated, Ben handles the planchette. Me and one of the paranormal team guys did the Ouija board while other people were asking questions. What is your name? the dark spirit and learn it calls itself Seth. When were you alive? not a physical person who had died. This was a demon who had never lived. To know that you've actually been in this same house with some sort of demonic presence and knowing that it could do harm, it definitely uh, it scares you. The planchette's erratic movement indicates Seth is extremely powerful. Have we seen you? Pointing to the camera. When I saw the figure on the video screen, I knew right away that it was the same figure that was looking down on us the day that we had the car accident. 
and I got that same sick feeling in my stomach. Oh God! Can you think of any fortune telling, conjuring, devil worshiping that might have summoned a demon? Not us, but, but when we first moved in here, we found pentagrams and candles in the bedroom. We thought it was just a bunch of kids messing around. They might have opened a door they shouldn't have. A door? A portal to the other side. Show yourself to us. Unleash your powers. Whether it was those kids or someone else, evil had been invited into that house. Angela fears for the family's safety. The spirit was so negative and so evil and so aggressive that the possibility of the family being in danger was very real if something wasn't done. I recommend she recommends a ritual cleansing to clear the house of the evil spirit. <laughs> What's happening? The planchette just started going crazy, almost like in a figure eight, just around in circles as fast as it could go. It was really, really scary. Seth wields the planchette, expressing his rage at the decision to perform a cleansing. We knew that Seth was totally against this and was trying to stop us from doing it. He definitely didn't want us there, and he didn't want us doing the cleansing. Using a Native American tradition, they burn sage to bless the house. The sage is used to cleanse areas of negativity so that you can see clearly into the spirit world. And in our prayers, while we're doing the cleansing, we ask the Heavenly Father to protect this family and fill the home with white light and rid it of any negativity. Let no evil come in. Let no evil torment this family. Protect this household. Let no evil come in. Let no evil torment this family. Protect Jackson. Protect Bridger. Protect Tori. Protect Ben. Protect Jamie. Protect this family. Protect this household. Let no evil come in. There was heaviness against our chest like we were being pushed back. He was trying to literally push us out of the house. Violet continue their struggle to rid the Shea House of an evil entity that calls itself Seth. It was pretty clear to me that it was resisting so strongly. The air was getting thicker and thicker, and it felt like something might grab you at any moment. Protect this family! Protect this household! a circle of salt that will guard the house from Seth's return. Will you draw a line around the house to protect it from evil? When we finished the cleansing, the entire atmosphere had changed. Although the house has been cleansed, the human spirits will remain. I immediately felt a sense of peace in the air. I felt that the sense of evil had been lifted. We appreciate this so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the next several months, life for the Shea family returns to normal. Sure. All right, two it is. Here we go. Well, hello, Sleeping Beauty. Fortunately, Tori makes a full recovery. You want some pancakes? Yes, please. Can I have mine with grape jelly? You sure can. Nothing but the best for you, sweetie? Who breaks their back in three places without being paralyzed? Here we are. She's, a, she's definitely a miracle. So we're very, very grateful for that. Come on, 
Jamie, it's the weekend. Look, I'm glad you're back at work. We can't just wait till Monday. No, I have a meeting first thing. Look, I'll, I'll take the kids to the fair tomorrow. You can have the whole house to yourself. I've been studying finals all week and I haven't seen you. I guess I could take a break. Bridger, are you okay? Bridger? Talk to us. It wasn't Bridger. It sounded kind of wicked and it just cut right through me. Bridger! What am I doing down here? Bridger, you stay here with your dad. I'll be right back. You okay, buddy? I could make out two voices. It just kept getting louder and louder and louder. I was just coming to get you. When I saw that thing at the end of the hallway, the first thing I thought was, oh no, we're not starting this again. No, get it out of here! Although the cleansing force set out, the house remains a portal to the other side. You okay, little man? I'm fine, Dad. You sure? Where are you going? Go, go, go. Using that doorway, a new demonic presence has emerged to take Seth's place. It was still haunted, and it was going to stay haunted, no matter what we did. The Shays know that if they stay in the house, dark entities will continue to prey on them. Ben and Jamie immediately put the house on the market and moved to an apartment nearby. A few weeks later, Ben finishes school and the family starts a new life in a new town. We are a much tighter family outside of that home. We're not dealing with the constant stress of being haunted. You taught him well. I always thought when I was younger that it would be kind of cool to live in a haunted house. I would never want to experience that again. Soon, another family moves into the house. They hear the ghost boy playing. But have yet to encounter the demon that plagued the chaise.